Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the First Unitarian Fellowship of Nanaimo. Our, our mission is to create spiritual connection and bring compassion, discovery, and social justice to life. How are we living this mission? And what can move us forward as a mission-driven community? This morning will provide an opportunity for considering these questions through sharing and collaborating, as well as getting inspired. My name is Catherine, and I'm your service leader this morning. My pronouns are she and her. Please take a moment now to silence and or turn off your cell phones. Thank you. I better do that. <laughs> and afterwards, try and remember to turn the back on, or else you might be in trouble. Let's say hello to everyone attending on Zoom. Turn to the camera at the back of the hall and wave at the frog. <laughs> and they, there they are. Whatever your ethnicity, race, theological belief, sexual orientation, gender identity, and or expression, age, and everything else that makes you who you are, please know that you are warmly welcome in this community. We are grateful for a diversity of voices on Sunday mornings, and our services vary from week to week. Our services run from 60 to 75 minutes. If this is your first time with us, a very special welcome to you. If you are joining us online, please consider sharing your contact information with us. You can share it with the host by going to the chat icon at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to welcome you to the community. We have a wonderful website at ufon.ca and I invite you to check it out for more detailed information about who we are, the services we offer, and how you can connect with us. We acknowledge today that we meet on the traditional, te te traditional territory of this Nunemuch First Nation. As Unitarians, we are committed to the work of reconciliation required to address the harm done to all Indigenous peoples and their cultures by non-Indigenous peoples. We have much to learn from the Indigenous perspective that the earth is the source of all life and that our responsibility is to honour and care for it. Now we have a number of announcements. Um, from Ruth, the goods and services auction will take place the evening of Saturday, June 1st. You can read up on auction items donated so far at the back of the room. If you turn around, you will see Ruth pointing at the list. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. You will also see donor offering forms. She's also pointing at those. It is time to put your offering ideas on paper, then hand the sheets into Ruth. PDFs of the form that can be printed and filled in are also attached to the newsletter and the weekly updates. Or you can ask Ruth to email you a word copy of the form that you can fill in on your computer and email back to her. We have two announcements from uh, Rupert and myself. The Welcoming Congregation Renewal Task Force meeting has been rescheduled to Sunday, May 12th, 12.15 to 2.15-ish in the children's room. Newcomers to our task force are welcome, but please first email the co-chairs, Rupert and Catherine, at welcoming at ufon.ca. Interested participants are still welcome to join the planned Summer Sunday Circle to be held in the hall and occasionally at one of the organizers' home. This is from Rupert and Kelly and Diane Cleary. Diane, yeah. Uh, the Summer Sunday Circle is starting Sunday, June 23rd, which is after our last service. Um, on the 16th, and it will run from 11 to a.m. to 1 p.m. If you're interested, please email Rupert and Kelly and Diane Cleary. Their email addresses are on the notice posted on the bulletin board at the back of the hall in the top right-hand corner. And I am looking forward to joining as a participant. I'm really grateful to them for starting this for us. Um, Lois sent me an announcement. She is not able to be here for the goods, uh, goods and services auction, but she will be selling some of her collages, which are gorgeous, after the service next Sunday, and all proceeds go to the goods and services auction, and they're very inexpensive, 2 to $20. I'm not sure how she's accepting money, but um, I'm sure you could e-transfer her. Maybe she likes cash, I don't know. And I feel like there's another one that I've forgotten now. Great. Let's see. Oh, yes, the most important one. Well, Today after service is a town hall meeting. 
So 12:30 uh, ish, as soon as people get some food, you can eat while we're doing it. We'll have a town hall to discuss important stuff with the board running it. Dom will be there. That's the announcements. To find out about all special events, groups, and meetings taking place in the hall, either go to the calendar on our website or read the weekly email sent to you on, I think it's Thursday now. Let us now enter into sacred time. Our music director, Leah Hokinson, will lead us into worship through music. Good morning, everyone. Our prelude this morning will be led by the fabulous Fufonics, and it's a chant called Stay Close. And the words are uh, by um, the uh, ancient Sufi mystic Hafiz, I think he's 13th century or something like that, but the words are, stay close to anything that makes you glad to be alive. And uh, we are going to invite you to, to rise if you wish. And uh, I'm going to put on my <coughs> speaker here and get some grooviness happening. <laughs> and you're welcome to move around and sing along if you choose. I'm not checking my email, I promise. <laughs> There is only one reason for being part of a Unitarian Universalist congregation, and that is to support it. We want to support it 
because this community points to what is noblest and best in human life. We want to support it because it is open to women and men, those of whatever religion, race, creed, color, place of origin, political affiliation, gender identity, or sexual orientation. We want to support it because it is the place where children can learn that religion is for joy, comfort, gratitude, and love. We want to support it because it is a place where walls between people are torn down rather than built up. We want to support it because it, because it is more concerned with human beings than with dogma. We want to support it because it searches for the holy rather than dwelling upon the depraved. We want to support it because it calls no one a sinner, yet knows how deep is the struggle in each person's breast and how great is the hunger for what is good. We want to support it because it calls us to worship what is truly worthy of our sacrifice. There is only one reason for being a part of our Unitarian Universalist church community. To, to support, support it and, and to, to risk belonging and, and thus being supported, supported encouraged, and, and challenged by it. Thank you, Russ and Martha. Okay, I'm going to be doing the chalice lighting, and there's been a, a slight change because I was alerted to the fact that today is an important day and for the next 24 hours, starting at sundown for people of Jewish faith and uh, Jewish heritage, and actually everybody. Um, today or t tonight and tomorrow is Yom HaShua. It's a day commemorating what we call the Holocaust. And Shua means literally catastrophe. We light a candle. We light a candle because any time life is annihilated, we are all diminished. This light reminds us that we hold both the responsibility and privilege to live lives that work in pursuit of justice for all, but especially for those who are marginalized and oppressed. We work for those whose stories we have not yet heard enough to change our hearts and our way of living. These words scratched into a wall in Auschwitz remind us to listen further still that we might remember. I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when I don't feel it. I believe in God even when silent. And Leah will lead us in our first song. Please rise again as the spirit moves you and we'll sing together, enter, rejoice, and come in, number 361. <laughs>
Hello, good morning. My name is Wendy Ellen. My um, pronouns are she and her. And the story this morning will be um, a video that would be put on. And the story is called The Magical Yet. And it's about basically having faith in yourself and the magic that's involved in trusting in the process of what's next. Thank you. The Magical Yet, words by Angela Tazirlazi, art by Lorena Alvarez, published by Disney Hyperion. There are days when your dreams haven't come true or you're upset by things that you can't do. If you've lost or failed or cried just a bit, you're tired of waiting, ready to quit. Like that shiny new bike you couldn't ride, and it didn't matter how hard you tried. You couldn't pedal and you couldn't steer, and you couldn't get that bike into gear. Then when you thought you were on the right track, you popped a wheelie and fell on your back. And now you won't ride, no way, not never. No riding for you, you'll walk forever. Don't give up now. There's a major game changer, a most amazing thought rearranger. Someone to show you how good you can get. Now introducing the magical yet. With this yet's magic, you can begin to see that you're going beyond where you've been. There are so many things that you've learned to do when you didn't know that yet was with you. Like when you babbled before you could talk or how you crawled before you can walk. Yet's a dreamer, a schemer, a hoper, a trier, a maker, a doer, a gotta fly higher. This yet finds a way even though you don't and yet knows you will when you think you won't. Like that shiny new bike that you couldn't ride, hop right back on with the yet by your side. Yet doesn't mind warm-ups, fixes, and flops, do-overs, redos, stumbles, and stops. Yet knows there's mistakes, some big and some small. With yet, you are sure to get over them all. Play the kazoo or play the bassoon, jam with the yet, and you'll soon be in tune. Try skateboarding tricks like the ollie hill flip. This can get you to the championship. Tongue twisters twisted your tongue in a knot, yet says keep trying and practice a lot. Be patient, you can't do it all overnight. Some things take days, months, or years to get right. But if you keep leaping, dreaming, wishing, waiting, learning, trying, missing, with the yet as your guide along the way, you'll do all the things you can't do today. Now you're bolder, braver, starting to see with yet you can get where you want to be. You finally did it. You knew you could. You're not just writing, you're getting quite good. But don't stop now. You've got so much to do. The good news is the yet grows with you. So no matter how big or old you may get, you'll never outgrow, you'll never forget, you can always believe in the magic of yet.
Yes, I'm the short one. The Committee on Shared Ministry is concerned with the spiritual health and well-being of the congregation as the fellowship fulfills its mission. COSM is made up of three members who are approved by the board and the minister and serve three-year staggered terms. Our role is to support, inform, and assess the ministry of the fellowship. COSM meets monthly with the minister, currently Reverend Deborah Falk, who is either present with us or on Zoom. Our appointed board liaison is Russ McNeil, who keeps us informed of issues the board is dealing with. It has been a more challenging year this year, I have to say. Our first year member needed to resign for health reasons, and second year member Dorothy Mandy, as many of you know, is currently in hospital, and we certainly wish her well. I am in my third year and final year and serve as chair. Despite these challenges, COSM has been a very interesting and worthwhile experience. And even though I'm, a long, I'm the longest member, certainly here, I've learned all kinds of new things. Okay. Do, do me to do that. Okay. This morning, you are all invited to be an active participant in shared ministry. At the appointed time, we will gather in small groups in different areas of the hall. Those of you on Zoom can be a group unto yourselves. We ask one person in each group to volunteer as timekeeper and making sure that each person has a turn to speak, including themselves, of course. And we ask a second volunteer to record the key points, not record verbatim, but the key points of each individual's responses. In order for us all to participate, your answers will need to be brief, which is a difficult thing for we Unitarians, but we'll, we'll do it, we'll try. The first question is, what brought you here? And please limit your response to about one minute. The second question is, what keeps you here? And you have three minutes for that question. It is doable, I tried it, you can do it. First time visitors, you are, if we have any, are most welcome to join a group. You can speak to the first question, what brought you here, and you may find it interesting to listen to the comments from people who have been here longer. When the time comes, our service leader, Catherine, will direct you to different areas in the hall, and the people on Zoom can turn on their screens. I'm excited to engage in this process. This is something new for us, it'll be fun. And there will be a signal to return to your regular places when we're finished. Thank you. We will now have a response of reading. I will read, <coughs> it will be up on the board. Yes, okay. I will read the, the dark writing and you can read the, uh, the congregation will read the italics. Blessed are those who yearn for deepening more than escape, who are not afraid to grow in spirit. Blessed are those who take seriously the bonds of the community, who regularly join in celebration and learning, who promise as much to minister as to minister unto you. Blessed are those who bring their children, who invite their friends to come along to join in fellowship, service, learning and growth. Blessed are those who support the church and its work by their regular, sustained and generous giving and who give of themselves no less than their money. Blessed are those who know that the church is often imperfect, yet rather than harbor feelings of anger or disappointment, bring their concerns and needs to the attention of the church leaders. Blessed are those Blessed are those who speak their minds in meetings, who can take and give criticism and keep alive their sense of humor. Blessed are those who know that the work of the church is a transformation of society, who have a vision of love and community as an accepting president, and who do not shrink from controversy, sacrifice, or change. 
Blessed are they indeed. Okay, this service has really been a work of collaboration between the board, uh, COSM, which is Martha right now, <laughs> and Sunday services, and of course the AV team, and um, lots of different people. And we're gonna um, change things up a tiny bit now because I'm going to, um, there's a slide coming up which will, which will be the, the questions we're gonna discuss in the small group, and I'm gonna talk about it. And I also wanna say, um, this is spontaneous, but in the spirit of collaboration, which is what this service is about and which this community is about, I would like members and friends to feel free to either talk to members of Sunday services or email us. If you have a day um, like the Day of Remembrance of the Holocaust or Red Rest Day, which I had forgotten about, if you have a day you think we should light a candle for, please let us know because we can't be on top of everything. And um, I, we could light more than one candle, I think. Okay, so um, changing the order up a little bit. Okay, today we are going to do a small group process, which we've done in the past. Um, and I think it's always been a very rich experience. And um, it's a little different today because we're actually collecting data I believe this is the board's idea, and I think it's a great one. We're going to have um, take notes on ideas and uh, thoughts and wishes, visions that people share during the group. So the process is going to be um, that we're going to number off. We're not doing that yet. We're going to number off, and then we will be going into seven groups spread out through our space. I'll tell you about that later and where to go. And I am asking that, please, uh, make me so happy if everybody would participate. Um, we have 20 minutes when we're in the group. It's going to take a few minutes to get organized. And um, these are the two questions. A little different than what Mar Martha had taken the first question and, and extended it, but this, there were so many iterations of this service and so many emails back and forth and phone calls. It was incredible. So, and then my computer died right at the end, which is why you get a lovely photocopy of my printing. Um, so the questions are, what brought you here? What keeps or might keep you here? And we each get a minute for that. And then how, number two, how can, do we live our mission of creating spiritual connection? And three minutes for that. So um, when you get into your group, uh, the, we're trusting, since we're all Unitarians and we know, or, or friends, and uh, we're pretty skilled people, um, we're not gonna assign leaders. When you get into your group of five, I think there's one group of four, you're gonna choose or volunteer two roles. You, we need a timekeeper, somebody who can remind people, oh, your time is up, or you know, you have 30 seconds more and the overall time of 20 minutes. And then we need a scribe, somebody with legible handwriting, please, uh, just to note down the general ideas, or if it's a specific request the person wants, put that in. We don't need every word. And no names, please, this is anonymous. And then the board and COSM will have a look at that information. I think it's great we're actually writing stuff down this time. And, um, so I'll run you through, through how to get into groups a little later. And now um, I'm gonna ask Dawn to come up and talk about the board's hopes. Hello, my name's Don Gayton, I'm the board chair. I was asked to provide some thoughts about the board's hope for this service. And so I'd say we have three I guess I should say I, but uh, I'll speak for the board. Three major hopes. First is to provide more insight into the congregation today, both literally and figuratively, literally today, because it's a people here today that we're gonna be hearing from, but also recognizing that the congregation changes over time. It's not the same congregation that it was when I joined, and to be cognizant of that. Second is to build ideas and enthusiasm as we experiment with new ways of doing Sunday mornings, activities outside Sunday, and also behind the scenes efforts to keep this place thriving. 
many congregations are struggling. We're not the only ones, you know, with a bit shortage in volunteers and such. So we're going to be trying new things. And the best way to get ideas is from you. Finally, to reinforce that while we make changes, we don't lose sight of our mission and the reason people walked in the door in the first place. The board really appreciates you at your active participation today. Thank you, Don. I am going to lead you through uh, a little mini meditation. And after I finish speaking, uh, there'll be a minute of silence. And then Leo will finish off with a musical response, as usual. And after that, I'll lead you into small groups. So um, if you're comfortable, close your eyes. If not, just soften your gaze. Get comfortable in your chair. And I'd like you to take three deep breaths and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Now I'd like you to feel your body in your chair, relaxed, and center your attention on the area where your heart would be in your body, that part of your body. Center your attention there. And I would like you to feel love. I'd like you to feel love emanating out from your heart in waves. You can make it a color. I like gold or pink. Feel love emanating out from your body and feel it surrounding all the people around you. Feel it filling the room. And I bet you can feel other people's love surrounding you. And now that we have a web of love, I would like you to imagine what it would feel like if in the next year, coming to the fellowship every Sunday that you can made you feel happy, as Mary said, made you feel joy, was something you looked forward to. What activities would we be doing in the hall on Sundays? What activities would we be doing other days that the congregation would be part of? What could you do? What, could you like, what would you like to bring to share with other people? Your gifts, your passions. How could they show up on Sundays? In the services? After the services? Any other day of the week? Online or in person? How could you share from your heart? And what do you need when you come? What makes your heart sing when you walk in the front door? Do you need to be more outspoken? Do you need people to understand something about you that they haven't yet? Do you need to do certain activities, be part of certain activities? And what can you give? How can you participate? How can you help? How can you be of service? So I'd, we're going to take a minute. I'd like you to just visualize the next year, just in general, but just with a, a warm glow going from Sunday to Sunday so that when you come to the fellowship, your heart sings. Thank you. 
Okay, now I want to thank Don for his brilliant idea of numbering off like Boy Scouts. <laughs> we thought of a lot of different ways to number, and numbering part has always been the hardest part for me, making the groups. I'm just challenged in that way. So Rupert helped me count, and Don gave me the idea. So true collaboration. So um, we're going to number off, and I know some of us have spotty memory. So uh, someone said when I told them, but, but people are going to forget the number by the time we get to the end. Yeah, some of us will. So I want you to depend on your neighbor to remind you. <laughs> Hopefully somebody near you remembers their number and then you can count back, right? Okay. Number of fingers, yeah. Oh, you could put up your fingers, except for we're going to do seven groups, but you could do that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, we're going to count off. I think that Kelly is in the kitchen. Suzanne, is Kelly in the kitchen? I know she... There you are. Yay. So we're going to count off. Let's start at the back with Diane. So could you loudly say, count, we're counting off to seven. Say, say one, Diane. Oh, one, two. Right. Four. No, you're three. <laughs> three. Okay, I never envisioned that we wouldn't be able to count. <laughs> Seven. One. One. Bill, wake up. <laughs> Five, say five, Charlotte. Six. You're five. Seven. No, no, seven. Yeah. Did I miss them? No, we got them. So am I one? One. <coughs> two. Since there's no kids, would you guys participate? Everyone got a number? Yes. Does everyone remember their number? Yep. Yay. Okay, next step. I will tell you where the groups are. Unless I lost my, oh yeah, I can't find my, oh my God, too many pieces of paper. Okay, I'll try to remember. <laughs> okay, group one, number one goes over there. Group number two is in the library. Number three is in this corner. Number four is by the piano. Number five is in that corner. And number six and seven are in the two children's rooms since we don't have any children today. And if you've forgotten, ask your neighbor. And I have, I'm going to come around with packages of paper for the scribe and the instructions. People online, Jane is going to put you into groups. Um, I wonder if there's some way we could share the um, questions with them again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I will give you one of the papers. It's okay. I'm going to give this to, to Jane. And people online, if you can just write your own notes of what you're saying and submit them, I guess, by chat, I guess. We haven't taken, we haven't taken notes before, so this is new. What do you think, Don? Submit them by chat? Okay, we'll try that. Okay, so can you, and it's a BYOC group. Bring your own chair and put it back after. So go to your area, please. Uh, there's chairs in the child one of the children's rooms. Probably you can just share them. Okay. Doing those small groups. Okay, we're gonna have a song, one verse, because we're a little over time. We still have to do um, the closing, which is just one thing I'm reading, and then we have to do offering too, because you're now so inspired. All those good feelings, and you want to share and be generous, right? Okay, the song is coming. Uh, yes, so please rise <laughs> as the spirit moves you, and we will sing uh, the first verse of Fire of Commitment. <laughs>
Okay, we're, we're, I'm going to do the closing words last, which makes sense. We're going to do the offering now. Um, I haven't done this for a long time. Thought I was beyond this. Please be patient with me. Thank you, Debbie. Okay, um, maybe everybody can remember what I usually say for the offering. <laughs> what? Yes, we're going to pass the baskets. And if you want to donate online, go to the UFON website, and there's a big blue button. You press it, and you can donate. Charlotte's going to... Charlotte and Cheryl, you can do the other side. And thank you if you donate monthly. That's awesome. And um, the charity is connective.ca, which provides um, mental health support and all kinds of support for a diverse community in BC. Charlotte and Cheryl and to all who gave and if you're new uh, just your presence is your gift I'm just remembering all the little bits okay closing words because of those who came before we are in spite of their failings we believe because of and in spite of the horizons of their vision we too dream let us go remembering to praise to live in the moment to love mightily, to bow to the mystery. I'm so sorry. My favorite part of the service is coming up. Carry the flame. Rise in body and spirit. In a circle. I think we know that, but yeah, in a circle. Or an oval. An oval. The words are on the back wall and the side wall. 